Traders, how are you? With Marcello. Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. Finance, economy, stocks, so you guys can learn how to put the docs together. This week we have the really bad rains in Paris. And, you know, they received about a month of rain in literally a few hours. Michael Burry, which is the legendary investor that predicted and bet positively against the crisis in 2008 and 2009, liquidating his entire portfolio. And we even have more food processing plants going down. And the best investor of all time, Bill Gates, supermarkets going on fire as well that are backed by him. Convenient, convenient, convenient. What happened overall this week was the reiteration by the central bank in the United States that they're going to quote unquote, do whatever it takes to get inflation under control. And there were even some, I don't think this is a direct quote from the Fed, but they essentially implied that, well, if we got to go into a recession to get inflation under control, it's got to happen. And remember that when they increase interest rates, that puts a halt on economic activity because it increased the cost of buying mortgages, of buying cars, of starting businesses. Everything that has to do with our financial lives, interest rate on credit cards go up. So add that to the inflation scenario where we're witnessing historic inflation right now on top of the fact that your increased cost of doing business, let's say, with the interest rates, that's definitely going to put a damper on economic activity. And that's why everything at the end of the week basically just collapsed. Overall for the week, stock markets down, not by much, but they did go down. Canada as well. As I mentioned to you guys, Michael Burry, which is, if you haven't seen the movie called The Big Short, I believe it's on Netflix. You guys should watch it. It's kind of a documentary of what happened during the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. Michael Burry was one of the only people that predicted and bet against correctly that that financial crisis, let's call it, when Ben Bernanke, otherwise known as the Ben Bernanke, he literally, the day before, I think it was, talked about how, oh, no, there's not a housing crisis. Everything is going to be fine. So that, and that's what I always tell you guys. Don't pay attention to what people say, especially the government, right? Because they're never going to tell you the truth. Pay attention to what they do. And so if Michael Burry, which is a legendary investor that kind of sees between the dots, which is part of the reason why I always try to do these videos for you so you can learn. If he's liquidating his entire portfolio and only keeping one called GEO Group, which is a private jail operator, I think that should actually tell you everything. Markets in Europe, mostly higher as well, mostly in within the percent range, positive and negatives, Istanbul being the biggest positive there. In Latin America, we have the Merval and the Socialist Republic of Argentina going up close to 4%. Africa and Middle East, that is mixed as well. Egypt taking the crown there, being most positive over 1%. And then in the far, far east, we have the Philippines taking the crown at 2.45%, even though that those markets overall in the Far East were mostly mixed. Bitcoin and crypto news, we got another possible collapse of another stable coin. If you guys, most people still don't invest in cryptos, right? So I just kind of want to lay it down for you quickly. A stable coin is essentially a crypto connected to, let's call it a currency, a fiat currency. Something like USDT, Tether, where one Tether supposedly is connected to one US dollar. So as the value of the US dollar goes up and down, the value of Tether, the USDT, should go up and down with it. Well, there's another stable coin called AUSDT, which lost its parity. It's backed by the DeFi, DeFi meaning Decentralized Financed Akala of Polkadot. So Polkadot is another currency, cryptocurrency. They came out with the AUSD which is the stable coin, which is supposedly supposed to be connected to the dollar, which went down as low as 55 cents and eventually recovered. It's been hovering between about 80 to 90 cents or so. And essentially it's gonna be what could be, some people are saying another Terra collapse. And even USDT, which is one of the most popular stable coins, they, they're, not, uh, they're not being audited. They don't know what they have. And so this is kind of part of this overall crypto winner where we're seeing a lot of these Cryptos collapse overall. Bitcoin briefly topped 25,000 on Monday, highest level since June until it took an absolute dump on Friday. It's now down 14.60%, just over $21,000. And essentially what happened was just that, if we have the situation where the central bank of the United States is talking about increasing the interest rates, 
People are going to want the dollar because there's a better return on investment. Remember that in kind of the institutional world, you know, big money, central banks, hedge funds, pension funds, they look at stocks as a risky investment because the return is variable, right? You don't, you don't really know if you're going to get a return or not, right? It's going to go up, it's going to go down. Whereas something like a bond, which is government debt, something like the USD, when the interest rate goes up, well, then it's more attractive because it's a fixed interest rate. It's a fixed return on investment, which is quote unquote, more secure. Insert conspiracy Marcello. Until the dollar collapses. Other than that, the commodities, the best investor in the world, Bill Gates, a third picnic grocery store catches fire in the Netherlands in less than a year. This is on top of, remember, the over 100 processing plants that have gone down in a fire or an accidental plane crash. Two of them were hit by plane crashes. And there was a and Pendleton, Oregon, there's a flour mill, which is over 100 years old, which had a co very unfortunate, quote unquote, conspiracy Marcello, fire this week, which had a total loss. And, you know, you got to give credit to Bill Gates, best investor in the world. Invest in the shots from the pandemic. We have a pandemic required to take the shot. Best investment ever. Now he's the biggest owner of agricultural land in the United States. <gasps> 100 processing plants go down in the last year. There, there are no coincidences. No, it's backwards. There are no conspiracy theories, but there are no co coincidences. I think I said that wrong, but anyway. Continuing, remember the preppers were right. At least 37% of American farmers say they're killing their crops and selling their livestock due to the fact that they're experiencing the third hottest July on record. Oil giant, giant Saudi Aramco hit a 90% surge in quarter two net income. They have made $48.4 billion in just the second quarter alone. From a year ago, they made 25.5, so they almost doubled their net income for the quarter. Oil settled a little bit lower over the last six months on Tuesday due to the fact that now they're saying that there's a possible deal with the Iranians again. So if the supply of Iran, which is cut off from the market right now, comes back online, that means that if we have lowering demand because of the economic prospects, right? Remember what I just mentioned about the interest rates. If the if the expectation is that the economy isn't going to continue and people, you know, start, let's say, uh, going in the same car to work, the demand of oil goes down. Well, if on top of that, we add more supply to the market, obviously that's going to come down, reflect in the price of, of oil and also the increase in the dollar due to the interest rates as well. So this week, oil was definitely down. Crude in the U.S. was down over 2.34%. Brent in the U.S. down almost 1.5%. Uh, the U.S. oil is hovering just over 90 dollars a barrel. Gold and silver took a huge dip as well, mainly due to the increase in the dollar because of the interest rate conversation. Gold went down 3.22% to 1,748, while silver went down over 9% to 1916. Financial and banking news, India's wholesale price inflation went down just a bit to 13.93%. UK inflation rose to another 40-year high. Due to the spiraling food and energy prices, their CPI rose to 10.1% annually. New Zealand and the Philippine central banks raised their interest rates by 50 basis points or 0.5%, 0.50%. And you can say it's not just the United States that's doing the increasing of the interest rates. It's the whole world, right? They supposedly have to get inflation under control. And then the U.S. index, which is the, the strength of the U.S. dollar, went up to a one-month high. This is the largest single weekly advance since March 2020. And I would keep an eye out on the US dollar due to the fact that I think we're going to have one more surge, a big surge, and that's going to be what's called the fake out breakout or the bull trap, where that's going to be the end, let's say, for the dollar. And that is going to start coming back down quite a bit. Germans paid a record 37.2% more to produce uh, to producers for commercial goods in July of this year compared to last year. Remember, Germany's the fourth largest economy in the world, whereas they're also the third largest exporter of food, excuse me, total after the Ch China and the United States. 
Political news, Arizona says that it's had enough of the border crisis. They're going to start stacking shipping containers and the border wall gaps to stop the immigrant inflows. Economic news, this is pretty big news. The U.S. mortgages, did the demand fell to a 22-year low last week. Mortgage apps fell 1% for the week and 18% for a year ago even though that we had a little bit of a drop in the mortgage rates. Remember that the housing market is about 17 point, it's between an average of about 17% of the overall U.S. market. So if the housing market goes with the increase in the interest rates, the whole U.S. economy is going to go. U.S. initial weekly claims drop by 2,000 to 250,000 in the week ending last Saturday, not yesterday, but the, the Saturday before. <laughs> And also UK real wages are reflecting and a decrease in 3% in the last quarter. So one of the things, for example, that you may not notice is, you know, they're telling us that the inflation rate is only eight, nine percent, for example, in the United States, right? In the UK, I, I know you guys watch a lot in the UK, there's about 10%. The actual inflation rate, if you're going out and buying gas, which is doubled or more, if you're going out and buying food, it's gonna buy 30 to 40% your wages are literally going down because of inflation. And at the end of the year, when you're getting your raise, where it's three, four, 5%, well, that's not enough to cover the 30% raise in inflation. So think about that. That's why I always told you guys, look, look for the side hustle trading. I think it's still one of the best businesses in the world. YouTube, Airbnb, find something extra to do because Conspiracy Marcello says, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. The preppers are right. U.S. existing home sales fell to a two-year low in July. This has to do, obviously, with the aggressive monetary policy of the Fed, as I mentioned to you guys a moment ago. Existing home sales dropped to 5.9% seasonally. Eurozone June construction output posts its biggest decline in 11 months. You can see kind of all the red flags that we're starting to see. The numbers, to me, aren't the biggest thing. When an investor like Michael Burry liquidates his portfolio, that, to me, is the biggest alarm bell. Corporate news, Cisco Systems, the huge U.S. technological company, went up by 5.8% to 49.31 their shares due to the fact that they had much better than expected results. They're also expecting much better ex results for 2020, 2023. Uh, movie company, the cinema chain Cineworld Group from the UK saw their shares collapse 67%. They're reportedly filing for bankruptcy since they can't get people back into the movie theaters after the pandemic. Berkshire Hathaway also is looking to add more positions. I believe I read a report. I'll confirm this next week. He's looking to buy even more Occidental Petroleum. So think of the big picture here, right? Instead of paying attention about, you know, we're not really a recession, how the government is trying to change the definition of a recession. Why is Michael Burry, a legendary investor, selling all of his portfolio while somebody like Berkshire Hathaway is buying so much of a petroleum company? When supposedly we're in this electric vehicle climate, protect the climate, you know, renewable energy phase, right? That kind of tells you everything, doesn't it? After the market closed on Wednesday, Tencent posted its first ever quarterly sales fall, Tencent being the Facebook of China, huge tech company, and a Chinese developer, Country Garden, which is, quote, the biggest builder in China, warned that their profit is going to plunge by as much as 70%, 70 percent, seven zero due to the fact that they're seeing a huge decrease in property sales, they're seeing a provision in impairment property projects and even Forex exchange losses. Their income is looking to go down from last year's 2.21 billion US to probably this year between 660 to 730 million. So huge drop. And remember, 70% of the wealth in China is in real estate. So that's a big hit for the second largest economy in the world. Bed Bath & Beyond is rumored to be entering into bankruptcy. They supposedly don't have enough money to buy the inventory they need to get the inventory to sell during the December months, the, the holiday, biggest season selling. Biggest season, <laughs> I'll say that again, biggest time to sell of all of the season, obviously Christmas, holiday time. And in a surreal story, 20 year old student acquires 6% of Bed Bath & Beyond. I believe it was $27 million and he makes $110 million in three weeks. Tell that to everybody that tells you that you can't make money trading. Trade news in Southeast Asia's largest economy, Indonesia. 
They may impose a tax on nickel exports this year because they want to start refining the metal inside of their borders more at home. So that could increase the cost even more of buying an electric car. And in technology, using new tech, researchers restored the blood circulation and other cell, fu cell functions in pigs after a full hour after their deaths. So obviously when you die, the blood circulation stops, your organs and everything stops. So now with this new technique, they could theoretically extend life by at least an hour, right? Because they did it in pigs, so they could technically do it in humans. Now other rich people are gonna get richer because they can be, uh, all I think about is Mr. Burns and The Simpsons, right? It's like, I want more, more, more money. Investment news, Maxime Bernier, which is the founder and leader of the People's Party in Canada, is stating that the central government plans to reduce emissions by 30% from farmers is gonna be achieved by cutting fertilizer, which she says it's gonna to lead to less food and cause food prices to go up. If you guys remember, they tried this in the Netherlands. When you remember the protests in the Netherlands what we talked about where they were throwing excrements of animals on the politicians' doorsteps and on roads. Indonesia, not Indonesia, Sri Lanka, which is just south of India, was having those protests as well. They were literally in the White House of the president in the pool, throwing a pool party because they were overthrowing their own government. This is the exact same thing that they're trying to do now in Canada. Netherlands, big problem. I believe Netherlands is the second largest exporter of food in the world after the United States. Canada is also a major food exporter. So again, conspiracy Marcello says, the preppers were right. International events, mega drought in the West US regions is the worst by some that say it's 1200 years, which is part of the reason why a lot of people are now selling all of their crops. And, and in Spanish, the word for the meat, the cows that sell for meat is ganado. I can't think of the word in English, but just so you know, that's how you say it in Spanish. Espanol, hablar bonito espanol. China continues to battle power outages due to the uh, a record breaking heat wave during the Yangtze River. So that's going down by a significant amount. And in addition to that, in the Southwest province of Sichuan, they're also ratcheting power amid blackouts due to homes and businesses. Harris is being hit by 80% of the average August rainfall in just 90 minutes. And this is what I mentioned to you guys about two years or so ago. I think it was November of 2020, where it's not, a, how, do I, how do I say this? We're just gonna start seeing a lot more problems, economic problems, social problems, environmental problems, and it's not just global warming, right? It's more extreme weather. As you can see, France, if you guys remember just three weeks ago, if you guys have been following the videos, they had the worst heat wave in history, right? The Rhine River, which is the border between Germany and France, part of the border, they can't use it for cargo anymore because the, the river has dropped so low that they just can't use it anymore. And even in that river alone as well, they found the, the, the hunger stones where during the drought, the mega drought of 1616, the year 1616, they wrote on the rocks, if you see this, weep, or if you see me, cry. Rappers were right. And unusual facts, father and son fishing on the coast of Maine caught a bright blue lobster, which some biologists say it's a one in two million sea discovery. And as I pull my seat back up, LeBron James, or as we say in Spanish, LeBron Yang, LeBron Yang, agreed to a two year, 97.1 million contract, which makes him now the highest earning player in NBA history with about $532 million in career guaranteed money. And that goes on to be Kevin Garnett, which was part of the Brooklyn Celtics, Brooklyn Celtics, Brooklyn Nets and Boston Celtics. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember to plant your seeds because the shortage is coming.